Here is everything I eat in a day with no food rolls. Mm. Guys, that is really good. Got this, this like pizza stuff. I won't make it easy. Hello, gorgeous humans. Today I am back with another full day of eating. You love these, I love these. We all love these. If you are new here, these full days of eating videos, they're not really like other ones. No, no, no. Let me give you the rundown. First of all, hi, my name is Colleen. I am a registered dietitian who firmly believes, and so does the research, that the healthiest approach to eating is to actually have no food rules and not diet, which is quite a change up for our current diet culture ridden society. And while you might think, oh my Lanta, I would just eat cookies all day if I did that, that's just not the case. And when you eat with no food rules, you naturally find balance and learn to eat actually healthier overall. Healthier for your physical body and healthier for your mental health. Win-win. So in these full days of eating, my goal is to show you what living a life of no food rules actually looks like and explained the why behind my food choices. Because really, that's what I want to help you do to help you learn how to do this too. So some things are gonna be kept ambiguous to prevent some comparisonitis and allow us to really focus on the why behind the eating choices. Also, they are to help you give you some new food ideas and keep things fun and interesting. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, you're gonna love this video. Be sure to take a hot second to like and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this day. Hi guys. All right. Today we are doing a full day of eating. Right now I'm actually headed to the grocery store. So today's Tuesday when I'm filming this and I typically do all of my short form videos. So like YouTube shorts, Instagram, TikToks, all those kinds of videos on Mondays. And I went to the grocery store yesterday to film a video. <sighs> I was dressed as the wrong decade. So I'm currently headed to the store to refilm that snippet and I'm supposed to be from 2006. How do I look? Do I look 2006? Um, I was dressed as someone from the nineties and I was like, what are you doing? So I have to go back and do that, um, right now. So that's what I'm going to go do. I grabbed, what did I do with that? I grabbed a built bar that I'm going to eat on my way there. I just wanted to like get there before people are at the grocery store. So I'm kind of like, let's get moving. So I just grabbed the bar. I did already eat this morning. I had granola before I, I went to the gym this morning. I usually eat granola on my way there and had that. Um, and then when I got home, the only other thing I had was my CBD gummy, which technically is like eating. And then I'm gonna have this. So we are going to get a move on here. I'm going to put my sunnies on. These are my actual glasses from I want to say like 2006. They're so dirty, but let's get this done. Get back home. I have something that I'm going to have later for breakfast, uh, actual breakfast that I haven't had before. So we'll see about that, but your girl's got to get moving. So I'll see you guys later. All right, so this specific morning was a bit wonky because I was kind of rushing around. I didn't get my usual morning routine of journaling, doing the Calm app and filling up my planner. I had gone to the gym that morning and that was a run day. And sometimes I take fitness classes. I actually say most of the time I do that, but today I ran in the morning. So I grabbed a protein bar because I knew that my muscles could use some protein to help them recover. And it was also convenient for me to just grab it and go. I wasn't really planning on being gone too long, so I didn't need something huge. And I also knew that my main breakfast would be more enjoyable when I got back versus trying to shovel it down my throat. So I just really needed something to A, help my muscles recover and to kind of hold me over until I was able to sit down and enjoy my breakfast more. Okay, yeah, so like I said, I'm trying something new today. I usually eat some sort of overnight oat for breakfast, but I tried something different. Usually I use yogurt in it. I have a recipe. I'll put it in the description of how I make them, but I used whipped cottage cheese to see or blended cottage cheese to see if it would kind of taste like cheesecakey. So I use the same recipe that I have. I'll put it in the description. Um, but I used 
blended or whipped, whatever, cottage cheese, just put it in a blender, whip it up. Let's see what it tastes like. It's a little more watery. I used cottage cheese from Trader Joe's and I don't love it. Mmm. Guys, that is really good. Highly recommend. I just put some berries in there too. Wow, that's good. So I went to Meyer, came back, the store I went to, and then I did some a little bit of work and then finished, really finished up making that video. And I was like, this is a good time for me to take a break and eat. So that was kind of honestly paired with hunger cubes is what drove this decision. Okay, so by the time I got home, I was ready for a more fueling breakfast. I was having some hunger cues, and I also knew I kind of wanted to get that out of the way so that I could start some work tasks without being interrupted by hunger like 20 minutes in. So I grabbed those, and as you can see, I'm obsessed with these cheesecake overnight oats now. Oh my gosh, they are so good. I've been making them so often ever since that day. Usually I use Greek yogurt in them, but I use blended cottage cheese, and and guys, I'm not kidding, it is delicious. I do eat overnight oats pretty much every day and I love them. And that wasn't always the case. I don't know what happened, something changed, but I love them. They are so filling and I really change up the flavors every week, actually multiple times a week. I just make a couple different variations. So I honestly never really get sick of them. For all of my meals, I aim to include carbs, fat, and protein because I know that's what helps keep my body full and satisfied the longest. Then I also aim to include some fiber in there for a bit of extra feel full factor and then some color, which can signal a little bit of a micronutrient boost. Then I also want it to be tasty. Sometimes that might look like adding in a few chocolate chips or some peanut butter, which I love. But for this one, I was really feeling some simplicity and oh, it was great. <laughs> Lunch has been a journey, you guys. Can you hear the recycle truck coming? Lunch has been a journey. A journey. I, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I'm starving and I'm parched right now. This is not an ideal situation, but let me show you what I'm sipping on. So I have these blackberry um, sparkling waters from Aldi and then take the lemonade and just squirt a little bit in there. Guys, it just makes the perfect, like, mm. it's just so good. Okay, guys, I'm starving right now. I got sidetracked. I wanted to find a cord to set up um, my mic before I filmed this. Could not find it to save my life. And I was like, I'm just starving. We have to eat something. So made hamburger salad and then I filmed a little portion and this microphone wasn't plugged in. So it's just been a whole blue. I'm starving. I'm going to basically do my best to be mindful. This is not a group, not an ideal situation. I'm starving knowing that going in is important. And then also one thing that I realized and just want to reiterate and we can dive into a little bit deeper when you are so hungry, you cannot be kind to yourself. It's so much harder to be kind to yourself and to make decisions that are going to support your health and make you feel good. I said some very choice words to myself because I couldn't find this cord. I was just like angry, right? And that was fueled, honestly, I was not kind to myself. It was, that was fueled by my hunger. So note to self, not even from a, you're going to be more likely to eat past fullness type thing for getting too hungry. You're just probably not going to make choices that are going to serve you the best and be kind to yourself. So I'm going to quite literally devour this. So hungry. Okay, guys, do you remember how I said I didn't do my morning routine? This. This is why I do it because my whole day was just kind of scattered, but I'm not perfect and sometimes you just can't. I also got way too hungry, which was contributing to my cranky mood even more. And when I did eat this lunch, it honestly wasn't the most enjoyable because I was so hungry and I was just like shoveling it in. It happens though, but I definitely asked myself, what can I do in the future to prevent this from happening again? Because it just didn't feel good. 
As for what I ate here, very similar overall composition to breakfast and most of my meals with the fat, carbs, and protein. This one doesn't really have a fiber boost. I just use box mac and cheese, so no like whole wheat noodles or anything, and that's okay. I really just like the blue box mac with this salad versus like a healthified version of like, I don't know, chickpeas or something like that. Nothing wrong with that, it's just not what I was in the mood for. This salad, you guys, is also so good. I could not recommend it more. It's my, like my one of my go-tos, especially for like the warm months. You can also use french fries or chips in place of the mac and cheese, but personally, the mac and cheese is my fave. I already had this lunch prepped and planned, so all I had to do was put it together. Pretty much I decide on one thing to have for lunches and then I just eat it throughout the week. It's just practical. If something comes to mind, yes, I can switch, but Honestly, I rarely do. Instead, maybe I might plan to have it for the next week or over the weekend. I find that for me, a lot of the time lunches during the week are just more, yes, I want them to be enjoyable, but a lot of the times it's, that's not necessarily the main focus. It is more of like, I gotta get my body fuel. How can I also make that enjoyable? I feel like with intuitive eating, a lot of people expect, oh, it should be this amazing meal. Some meals are just gonna be meh. Don't get me wrong loved the meal, but you know what I mean? The goal isn't always, oh my gosh, this is gonna be the most mind-blowing meal. That's just impractical a lot of the times. You guys, I did not expect today to be such a crazy day. Like, oh, that's what you get on just random days of filming. Okay, let's catch up. So I have been working, working, working all afternoon. I did stop and have some cherries. They sounded really refreshing and good. I had been sitting outside. And then I'm gonna make an interesting snack right now because got this, can you see it? This like pizza stuff. Um, it's pizza sprinkle seasoning from Trader Joe's. And I had an idea. I also have a bunch of random stuff that I need to use up in the fridge. It's like some cottage cheese and I have some crackers. We're just gonna put something together. And we'll see how it is. Okay, so essentially I'm opening these upside down. I'm gonna take one of these. Um, I do really like these crackers. Or technically they're crisp spreads. I'm gonna put some cottage cheese on top to add some protein. And I should have I should have grabbed a plate. Oh well. Um, so we're gonna go with this and then I really should have grabbed a plate. We're just gonna put some seasoning on top and see how this is. Try it out. Mmm. Very good. Would highly recommend. Fun. Okay, this was kind of strange because guys, if you know me at all, you know I am such a sweet tooth girly and it's rare that I crave something savory, but this was just calling my name. And I know this kind of sounds like a strange combo, but I dig it. So for snacks, I usually aim for two out of the three macronutrients to help it be a little bit more filling. If I just need a lighter snack, I'll typically, I mean, one will be fine. It doesn't need to fill me for as long. This is why understanding your hunger levels can be so important so that you can apply the knowledge that you have of that to crafting whatever meal or snack that you're making. The cottage cheese I used here actually has fat in it. So we kind of hit all three macronutrients here, carbs from the crisp bread, protein and fat from the cottage cheese. Then I added some satisfaction and enjoyment from that TJ's pizza seasoning. Honestly, it was good, but I definitely prefer the everything bagel, but this was fun to try it. I'd recommend it. I like this snack because I was able to make as many as I needed to feel satisfied and really kind of let my body run the show for how much to eat. All right, dinner time. We are having salmon burrs tonight. This is one of my favorite easy dinners to make. Um, have our stuff here. Um, buns, lettuce, tomato, and then I make this lemon dill mayo. It is my favorite thing. And I just get the salmon burgers from Costco. So we are gonna have those. And then we have some veggies on the grill. I chopped up some zucchini and carrots. On the grill, a little oil, a little salt, delicious. That's what we have for dinner. Okay, a couple things to note here is first, the salmon burgers from Costco are fabulous. 
but you have to make the lemon dill mayo to go with them, you guys. So good, so easy. You will not regret taking the 30 seconds to do so, I promise. Now I did opt for a whole wheat bun here, a little nutrient boost. Why? Because I don't really notice a difference between enjoyment, satisfaction, between whole wheat buns and white refined ones. So sure, I'll snag the whole wheat ones. A great way to gauge if you should pick the quote unquote healthier option is to ask yourself, would getting this take away from my enjoyment or satisfaction? If the answer is no, sure, go for it. If the answer is yes, it might be a time that you skip it, just like I did at lunch with the box mac and cheese. I didn't pick the quote unquote healthier whole wheat version, and that's fine. So another thing to note here is I served myself the same thing that I served my husband, like same portions and everything. And that's also okay. Also, whenever you make veggies, highly recommend just making a ton. You can see that we had a huge bowl. So I was able to have some for leftovers to snack on the next day. Guys, leftover grilled veggies are my favorite thing. They're so good. Highly recommend. Okay, maybe not my favorite thing, but they are a delicious snack. This was the end of the day and your girl wasn't hungry, but I wanted a little bit of ice cream, so I had some. This day, as you probably picked up on, was a little bit chaotic. Halfway through, I actually felt <laughs> really bad for you guys for watching this because I wasn't my usual upbeat bubbly self, but honestly, hey, that's real life. And sometimes this is when you get some of the best learning experiences. With this ice cream, there was totally a little bit of an emotional driver for me to eat it and that's okay. <laughs> Since I knew I wasn't hungry, I kept an eye on my physical comfort and I ate the amount that would satisfy emo my emotional need, yet not make me feel so full. Something that I always say to my clients in the society is it's okay to eat ice cream on a bad day. It's normal to want to pick me up, but will eating ice cream to the point of a tummy ache actually fix your bad day? Or will it just add to it? Cause now you got a stomach ache to deal with too. Would ice cream be more enjoyable when you're not so full and when you can actually enjoy it. So with this in mind, I was able to have a bit, then easily stop and put it away knowing that I have more times to enjoy ice cream left ahead in my life. It would be there tomorrow. I could go to the store to get more if my husband ate it. There was no urgency there. And what I actually needed was to get my behind to bed, get my Kindle out and decompress and get ready for a good night's sleep. So that's what I did after that. All right, guys, and that is a wrap on this day of eating with no food rules. Remember that this is just one day and that every day is different. And also that you didn't see what I ate the day before or the next day. And those things all change too. And really when you think about that, comparing your intake to my intake to someone else's is really pointless. But I do hope that this video helped you understand how I make choices with no food rules and that you feel encouraged that if you decide to stop dieting and embrace a life of food freedom, that no, it won't necessarily just be eating Twinkies and ding dongs all day. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to the channel and a part of this No Food Rules fam. And as always, leave a comment with any thoughts, questions, or video requests that you've got. I've got a couple in mind, but I always love hearing from you. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.